Hello everyone, welcome back to Neutralix. I'm your host, Kozlix. Today, I'm telling you eight tips for controller Brawlhalla players. These tips are easy to implement and will help you improve as fast as possible. If you enjoy the type of stuff and you want to improve at Brawlhalla or other fighting games in the future, multiverses, then hit that like, subscribe for more, and comment down below if these tips helped you. And if you have any tips for other people that were not included in this video, I'm sure everyone would love to see down below. So go read the comments after this video. Let's start with this video. Now, one last thing. If you wanted to really improve at Brahalla, then go check out our coaching website, teammutualix.com, I believe, or whatever. The link to that is down below. Um, if you want a personal coaching session from me, then you can go purchase from me or any of the coaches here at Neutralix. Okay, now let's get right into this. So the first thing we're going to be going over is this little thing that a lot of people don't know, but you can actually do, is pressing two buttons at the same time. Um, so as you can see in the bottom right of my screen, uh, you can see my controller inputs. And one thing that's really hard for new players or Brawlhalla is hitting combos. So when hitting combos, a lot of them require a jump. It requires two inputs in a row, like a down light jump there. And instead of pressing the jump and then the nair, instead, we're going to press them at the exact same time. And what this does is it perfectly jumps and then nairs. And even though they're pressed at the exact same time, it inputs literally frame perfect. So if you want to input, and this is for every combo, like side light nair or side light nair, uh, every weapon has a combo that requires a jump from my understanding. Maybe not great sword, but... Basically, every weapon requires it, so press the buttons at the same time, and it's going to be a lot easier to input these combos. So tip number two, and it's similar to the first tip, is sure, you can press the two buttons at the same time, but what about the button on the right, right? I'm not moving, like, sure, you could you could go like this and press them very easily, but I'm not going to move like this and, like, to press the other two, even though you, te you technically could, but it's super awkward. So how do you press the buttons at the same time? Um... You technically don't, but what you can do, and this is what I do, is you slide your finger. I use this part of my thumb, like the center part of the thumb. It's kind of, you, you develop a callus over time, but that's fine. Um, it might hurt for the first couple of weeks. Not that much. Um, don't over practice, but it'll, you'll create a callus. Here, you know what? Check this out. You see my two thumbs? Look at this, right? You see this one? Like right here, it's like yellow. That's a callus. So you see how it's on one hand and not the other? That's from doing this over the years. Uh, slide your hand from the bottom to the side. And it's really fast. You just slide. And you can see kind of what I'm doing. You can see the, the input on the bottom. It's like A, then B. And it's not even like sometimes registering the A. I'm doing it so fast, I guess. But um, yeah, you just go from A to B and you slide your hand. So it's the same as pressing them in a row. But yeah, it's a little bit harder. It kind of sucks, but you're not going to be going jump recovery as often as you are going to be pressing the other two. So um, I think this controller layout works. And uh, yeah, it's not too hard, but it just takes a little bit of practice and playing consistent to develop that callus so it doesn't hurt uh, ever. <laughs> but uh, yeah, let's get to tip number three. So tip number three, we're going to be going into the controls for controller. Um, the first thing you're going to want to do is make sure quick attack pickups is off. I believe it's on by default. That is just something that should be off all the time. Um, another tip, uh, so that here's an additional tip. Press up to jump, tap up to jump, turn that off as well. Um, this just allows you to be able to input Nair a lot easier if you hold up instead of it accidentally jumping you. Um, just make sure it's off. It's off by default, so this shouldn't be an issue. That's why I'm not including it as a tip. Um, but this next actual tip, other than the quick attack pickups, uh, improved sticks. We're going to turn this off. Unless your controller is broken, we're turning this off for now. What this does is it increases the dead zones on your joystick. Uh, so let me kind of show you what I mean. If I flick my joystick, and this is a problem with Xbox controllers, you see how sometimes I keep tapping to the left, but you see how I'm turning to the right? I'm only tapping to the left. You guys can see I'm only tapping to the left in the bottom right corner, but it inputs to the right. That's because my joystick is recoiling. Whenever I flick it, it goes from left to a little bit to the right and then to the center. And it registers that right input. If you turn on improved sticks, it does get rid of this. But then the activation that's required to actually move, like you can see me actually moving my joystick in the corner. Even though I'm moving it here, the player is not moving. 
and only starts moving like really far like like a it, it's like over half the distance so this kind of requires it's almost like more input lag the time between registered inputs is longer because you have to press your joystick on the complete opposite direction so i don't recommend for this to be on unless your controller joystick is like broken and you keep getting that miss input like every single time you input like if you flick the joystick and it happens every time then turn it on uh that means your controller is broken but uh if you turn it off and it doesn't happen most of the time then uh you're good another tip i just want to talk about is the best controller for brahalla because of the stick issue i'm talking about this exists on xbox controllers when you're on joystick so when you're playing joystick i actually recommend playing with a playstation controller specifically a ps5 controller i've never had this issue with the joysticks on ps5 controllers however i've had this issue with the joystick on a lot of xbox controllers another thing that can solve this are the xbox elite controllers or the pro controllers whatever you want to call them uh, you can actually increase the dead zone through microsoft's accessories in windows but you can't do this for the default xbox controller it's kind of terrible um there are some steam drivers that help with this but uh, X, um, Brahalla uses your Windows Xbox driver and it doesn't let you edit it. It's terrible. Um, so I, I would recommend a PlayStation controller. If you are like, if you don't have a preference and you're cool and open to playing with either controller, I would pick the PS5 controller and you don't need to go pro. I would just go default for now. Go pro when you actually reach a pro level. Um, uh, whatever their pro controller is called. But yeah, just, just pick up a PS5 controller. This is better for both D-pad and for analog. The only problem with the analog on PS5 is it's in a terrible position ergonomically. Like Xbox is way more comfortable. So that's why I use an Xbox controller. Uh, I've tried the PS5 controllers. The bumpers as well. I use bumpers to dodge and dash, which we're going to be talking talking about a little bit later. Um, They're just harder to press. Um, And I've got some wrist issues. So uh Take that as you will. Um, both controllers have pros and cons, but if you're new to Brahalla and you're open to both and you just want accurate inputs and you don't care, go PS5. I use Xbox and I'm telling you to go PS5. I've tried both controllers. So please take my opinion as unbiased. I've done as much research as possible. And uh, yeah, I recommend the PS5 controller. Next thing, next tip, I don't know what tip number this is at this point, is to overclock your controller. I'm not going to be showing you how to in this video because the method on how to do it does change sometimes. They've been updating the overclock tools. Maybe there's a better one out there. Um, but I'm going to link down below a video that teaches you how to overclock your controller. If you're an Xbox player, you probably don't need to overclock your controller. Um, but if you're a PlayStation player, like on PlayStation PC, you can't overclock on console, just being clear. But... If you use a PlayStation controller and you use it with PC, you must overclock your controller. Like, it is crucial. I promise the PlayStation controllers have a lot of default input lag, so we need to overclock that polling rate, and it's going to be a big game changer. They allow you, you to overclock controllers on uh, Apra HoloLens for a reason, so please overclock your controller. It is, like, free buffs, like, less input lag for free, so... Check out the link down below that teaches you how to. The next thing I want to talk about is using D-pad or using analog. So we talked about the PS5 and the Xbox a little bit earlier. But again, if you don't care between the two and you're like, I like both of them, go D-pad. D-pad is more accurate and you're never going to have analog issues with D-pad. The D-pads last longer than the analog sticks. Um, so please, yes, go D-pad if you're new to Brahalla. But if you have been using analog for a while and it would take a big um, adapting, like, I don't know. If it takes a while to adapt to D-pad and you really don't like it, then just stick to analog. It doesn't matter that much, to be honest. Luna and I play analog, but then there's people like Flower and Crocky and others who use uh, D-pad, um, but then uses the world champion. He uses analog. So it really doesn't matter. Uh but if you were to pick between the two, I would say just D-pad because of your wallet. <laughs> D-pads, you don't need to replace as often. Um, but other than that, yeah, it doesn't matter. And the eighth and final tip in this video is to change your dash control. We talked about this a little bit earlier. I just kind of mentioned it. But I switched my dodge and dash to left bumper. And the reason why is the activation period to input it. So for instance, as you can see on my trigger, um, 
okay you can't see okay you can kind of see how long i'm actually holding it and you can see even though like look at the top left trigger even though i'm pressing it it doesn't input a dodge until it's pressed enough right and that activation period um that can like it, it theoretically takes longer than pressing the bumper so uh, that's why i use the bumpers um but it's not that long of an activation period. This is like a very theoretical thing. If you are using triggers, that is a okay. Um, both triggers and bumpers are good. Um, so pick your preference, but I have been preferring the bumper for the majority of my career. I used to play trigger and then switch the bumper. Um, but uh, yeah, both work. The activation for the trigger is technically longer than the bumper. So take that as you will, but I don't think you're gonna be dashing more than like, like what's humanly possible pressing the bumper but sometimes it can be hard like if you're dash dancing it's also hard on your finger where the bumper is just a much quicker input so uh yeah I, you know I, I would switch the bumper but <laughs> this is such a small thing it's not going to impact your games so pick whatever you prefer those are the eight controller tips that i'm recommending for you guys if there's more tips i'll make a follow-up video to this this is all i can think of right now comment down below if you know any tips for other people who are watching this video subscribe to neutralix if you want to improve a brahala or other fighting games we're going to be expanding to 2xko and multiverses this year so stay tuned for that if you want to improve at those games as well thanks again for watching i'll see you later peace